gross. Looks like we're not getting any riding done tonight. We've got flashing lights, lightning, thunder, rain, pretty much everything you can put together to swamp out an evening. But that's okay, because I've had other motorcycle-related activities to keep me busy, namely changing oil. Gorgeous thing, which you just saw in a back shot right there. Look at that. Her first oil change is complete. And let me bring you guys into this, because yes, your eyes are not deceiving you. That is 267 miles. So why change it so soon? Well, let's get into that. But first... Let's talk about this Kawasaki motorcycle oil change kit that I picked up. We got four quarts of 10W40 oil, a filter, the washer, because you got to have that because you know it'll do that little marking its territory thing if you don't with the little drippy drips, some gloves, and a disposable paper funnel. And real quick, guys, the four quarts that you get along with the filter will only fill it up to that mark on your sight glass, just the other side of those lower marks right here. Now the upper marks are as full as it can be safely, but realistically you want that line somewhere in the middle. Now what I will end up doing is just have an extra quart laying around and if it needs to be topped off just a little bit, I will do that. But in this case, it's fallen fairly well in between those lines, so not too much will need to be added. Just maybe a tenth or a quarter quart. I believe with filter and completely dry, this is a 4.2 quart system. All right, guys, so yes, she is still going through break-in, and no, she's not due for an oil change, technically, by the book anyway, until about 500 miles. But I'm kind of a big fan of changing oil very early on in the break-in process with a motorcycle, and... Well, my reasoning for that is that they turn at about double the RPM of a normal car engine just going down the highway. For example, this 900 RS cruising down the highway will turn at about 4,500 RPM where a typical car might only turn around 16 to 18, maybe 2,000 RPM at highway speed. So higher RPM, just wanna go ahead and knock out an early oil change. Now I did go back with the standard mineral type oil the next oil change will be full synthetic, but the idea here is to basically give the bike enough of a flush on that initial run to where coming into that 500 mile marker, it's just got a lot cleaner oil in it at the termination point for that first oil change. I just wanted things to be a lot cleaner and it seems to work out pretty well. Now, as far as break-in procedure goes, this is kind of a hot topic for a lot of guys. There are some folks that are extremely by the book and will barely run these engines and will barely tip into the throttle and they break them in very soft. Other guys say, look, you want it fast, you break it in hard and fast and they will basically run the thing wide open every chance they get from the moment that they get the keys. I'm a little bit in between with an added oil change, if you will. So what do I mean by that? Well, I try to take it fairly easy with the bike. I don't really dog on it too much, but I don't mind running it at wide open throttle. I just don't take it to red line necessarily, and I don't bang on the bike either. I'll pretty much roll into wide open throttle in a single gear, typically fifth or sixth, maybe fourth, but I'm not really hammering on the thing. And that's a rarity. In a given, say, 30 to 40 mile loop, I might see wide open throttle once or twice. And that's not trying to sugarcoat it or downplay it. That's about as much as I might see. Typically, at the most, it might be one. And typical riding around, I try to go through different power sweeps, two to 4,000 RPM, four to 6,000 RPM, with varying levels of deceleration as well, letting the engine brake, doing everything that I can within a moderate RPM range to give everything an opportunity to seat and bed in. So with that, I throw in an extra oil change and I think I've got a pretty safe break-in procedure rolling. At least it's worked for other bikes that I've had in the past. Now, with all of that being said, I want to give kind of an initial impressions of this bike as well. Now, I know that I've talked a little bit about how, well, it's kind of exceeded my expectations in a few pretty critical ways namely performance all the way around. The way that the bike handles, the way that the bike accelerates has all been very uh, eye-opening, if you will. It just, it, the way that this bike runs doesn't really match the way that this bike looks. 
it's like a sport bike in a different suit, if you will. And I love that about this bike. It's extremely unassuming, except it will easily hoover and eclipse 130 miles an hour and keep pulling. I, this bike's happy cruising speed seems to be somewhere around, around 90 to 105. It's kind of interesting in that respect, where it really is trying to be more sport bike than power cruiser, or at least old school 80s hot rod cruiser, if you will. So that's a neat surprise for me. The bike is incredibly flickable. It really does invite you to dive into corners a lot more aggressively than you might think. And again, I know how guys have complained about the suspension setup with these bikes from the factory. Fellas, I don't have that much put into the suspension setup on this bike. Just a few tweaks in terms of a screwdriver and the bike actually sets up really nicely, at least in the type of riding that I do with a bike, especially a bike like this. So uh, it's winning in a lot of areas that I just did not give the bike a whole lot of credit coming into. I actually was just expecting a cool, a bit more upright riding position, a compromise between sport and standard. And I figured that would be about it. But to my surprise, this thing is way outshining any expectations that I've had before. So what's coming for this bike? Well, we are gonna get a tune and we are gonna get exhaust. I will go through some of the airbox modifications. I'm on the fence with running short runners, uh, or talking about the shorter velocity stacks, uh, but it is gonna get one key feature for me anyway, and that is a G2 quick throttle. Now, I know what some of y'all are thinking. I mean, your mind's already blowing up. How are you gonna get a quick throttle for a bike that's already got a really snappy throttle? Well, there's a couple of reasons for that. One. I'm more comfortable with a shorter throttle pull. I've got uh, weird fingers where I can point at you and then point over there. In other words, I've got really jacked up double jointed fingers and I like to have my finger on the brake lever. And if I have a throttle that I can't have a fingertip on a brake lever, lever, when I go to roll the throttle forward, it'll bend my finger back like that. It's kind of weird feeling, it doesn't hurt, it's just weird. So the G2 allows me to have a cruising speed without really twisting the throttle too much. Plus, I love the fact that I can come out of a corner and with a little bit more, a little bit less, I should say, turn of the wrist, be more into the throttle. I like that because it gives me, at least the way that my brain is wired and everything, I feel like I have better control over the bike with that quicker throttle and it adds to blips. It's a lot easier to blip the throttle on downshifts just because you're whacking the throttle a little bit more with that 10% quicker throttle. And if you think that that's a whole lot or if you're worried about the quicker part of that quicker throttle, it's really not that big of a deal. My T595 has the exact same type of setup and it completely changed how easy that bike was to ride. So, or I should say is to ride because it's sitting right there. Um, so with saying all of that, I am over the moon happy with this bike and I'm stoked to be able to bring you guys some content and bring you guys along for the ride with this bike's evolution. But again, uh, the G2 throttle is on the way, exhaust, still waiting for a production date on that. We are gonna get her tuned. And I am gonna do something about these mirrors. I've got a little bit smaller, shorter mirror that's coming. I'm gonna keep it on the stock, not doing the bar ends, but I'm gonna get a little bit smaller mirror to go in there just to kind of tidy that up a little bit. But so far, again, guys, if you've got one of these bikes, you can probably relate with what I'm about to say. Uh, one of the liveliest, most fun motorcycles I've ever had. And if you've had a background in sport bikes and you're looking for something that's a little bit more, um, I don't know, laid back, more upright, maybe a little bit more stylish and something that's a little bit of a break from the norm, don't sleep on these little 900 RSs. They don't really look like they're gonna perform as well as they do, and I will say this, the performance envelope that they give you is gonna be extremely familiar if you're used to some old school, I don't know, GSXR 750 kind of flavor. And with that, guys, I'm going to wrap this up. Post up your comments. If you've got one of these bikes, I'd love to hear your experience. And that's a wrap. Adios.